So my name is Nada Rustum, um, and I'm going to present to you today the impact of COVID-19 on women's labor market outcomes, evidence from the MENA region. Uh, this is a paper um, that is co-authored with uh, Vladimir Alenci, uh, uh, Dr. Vladimir from the UN Esqua, and Dr. Riham Riz from the Ministry of Planning and Economic Development in Egypt. And so. Um, let me take you to the objectives of the of this uh, paper. Um, so what we wanted to do is that we wanted to look at the impact of COVID-19 on women's labor, out, uh, labor market outcomes in the MENA region. And we wanted specifically to look at um, how uh, school closures uh, affected mothers' decision to supply their labor, and also to look at um, how the employers, uh, whether the employers uh, showed specific preference for single or child-free women over uh, child carers during the pandemic. Um, and so um, let me first give you some uh, motivation about uh, the topic and also um, important background information about uh, women's labor force participation um, in the MENA region. So uh, this graph is retrieved from um, a paper that was recently published by um, uh, Nelly Malek et al, and um, it's published on the RF, uh, ERF website. And um, I thought, I, th I, th I thought that this graph is really amazing because um, it really uh, it gives like the history of women labor force participation in the, in the MENA region. So the first thing I want you to look at is the plot in the top right here uh, for women in 1998. Um, and uh, I think the thing that you can notice the first, like the most, <laughs> um, most noticeable thing about this a plot is that um, we have this very large uh, orange area, um, and this area actually reflects the uh, number of, uh, like the share of women who are out of the labor force. So, uh, for women, for example, uh, in the ter with tertiary education, uh, almost 40% of them are, are, are out of the labor force, and if you add to that uh, those who are unemployed, uh, they um, amount to uh, almost 50% of, of those women. And so, uh, w w when you go also um, down the education ladder, you can see that this share is, is increasing even more. And so, um, I also want you to look at the same column um, down. Uh, so you can see, for example, the progress over time, uh, whether w a labor force participation for women improved. And obviously, you can see that it actually uh, it's actually worsening. So um, more and more women are leaving the labor market or are pushed out of the labor market. Um, and um, the reason for that for that actually is. Uh, Related basically to what is happening in the um, in the public formal sector, uh, public formal sector. Yes, so the public formal sector started to shrink uh, over time due to a structural change in the economy, and so um, uh, what happened is that um, the, the the government wanted to to leave the space for the private sector to basically pick up the demand side of uh, the equation uh, or to create more jobs uh, in the market and to retire from uh, the labor market. Um, but what happened is that the, the private sector was not able to provide those jobs. Um, and you can obviously see this specifically uh, for in the graph for men here in 2018, for example, you can see that the dark, blue, dark uh, green area is the share of men working in the private sector, uh, in the private sector, the formal one. And then because the private sector, uh, the formal private sector was not able to grow as much um, as the public sector was shrinking, uh, the informal sector was filling up the gap. So the green uh, part here. And all what I'm saying now is, is just happening for, for men, not for, for women. Uh, as you can see here from uh, the 2018 uh, graph for women. Uh, and it seems that the private sector for, like it's, it's, you cannot even see it, I think on the graph, the share of women working in the private formal sector. Um, it's really n almost not there. And this is related to Obviously, something uh, uh, like the inability of the private sector to create jobs, but also it's heavily related to uh, culture, basically, and to uh, women's decision to participate in uh, the labor market. Um, so let me take you to 
like the three underlying factors that explain uh, women's decision to work in the MENA region. So why um, women would supply labor um, in the MENA region. So uh, first, um, it's related to economic needs. So if um, a woman is married to a man uh, who cannot provide, so, so usually they're not considered as the main breadwinners in the in the household so if the main breadwinner uh, in the household is not able to provide enough to the family they would usually go and work and this mostly happens in lower um, strata of the society um, also um, the second uh, reason is why women don't provide their supply in the labor market is related to values. So uh, we have a lot of papers talking about um, the idea that uh, values, um, so, um, women who enter the labor market, they are usually looked at as they're not taking very well care of their children, or if, especially if they work long hours, um, they're not able to provide uh, enough care for the husbands and so on. And also, um, there were some papers uh, in the literature uh, in the MENA region related to marriageability. So, um, women anticipate that uh, if they work, they, they, the, the probability that they got getting married is slow or uh, they can work, but after they, they get married, they just leave the job. Um, there's also, so given those two like factors that are heavily related to culture, um, women uh, always look for opportunities that would give them like the jobs that are like you don't work long hours and you have like those uh, long maternity leaves like two or three years and so on and so um, these jobs basically were the public jobs that are not offered anymore and the private sector is not able to provide those jobs anymore so they just decide not to participate anymore in the in the labor force and um, so why am I giving you all of this background information because um, what we thought is that it's very interesting to see how um, the pandemic would change some of the social norms that are preventing women from entering the labor uh, market or uh, that maybe those norms actually like uh, become more rooted uh, and so even push more women out of the labor, labor market. So that's what we wanted to explore, whether um, the social and, um, and the labor market changes that are brought by the pandemic uh, would affect the uh, women's labor uh, force participation and uh, their labor market outcomes. Um, so what, what can we find in the empirical evidence? Uh, the international literature um, provide controversial insights about uh, the changes that were brought by the pandemic internationally, uh, so uh, worldwide. Uh, so for example, um, there are those like papers that um, uh, hypothesize and also like show uh, through the data that the lockdown induced household relocation of tasks. So men are taking more um, responsibilities uh, when it comes to uh, childcare and when it comes to household chores and so on. And uh, also uh, there, there's like this other uh, opposite uh, side of the literature that uh, shows that mothers had to take longer spells of unpaid leave and unemployment for the provision of childcare. Uh, due to the, of course, the closure of the nurseries and the, ha and the schools and so on. So men, like, you know, not providing more help and they had to leave the, their jobs basically for, for that, to take care of their children and so on. And there's uh, also like this interesting uh, stream of, uh, of literature that discusses uh, the employer's adoption of more flexible work schedules and telecommu uh, telecommuting options. So the idea here is that um, because of the pandemic, it we, we saw that work can be done at home. Uh, there's uh, other methods of, uh, of work. Uh, and so uh, some of the uh, employers started to adopt this and uh, give more uh, um, flexible schedules for women. And this would allow them to balance uh, between work and uh, between their uh, taking care of the children and the household children and so on. Uh, so this might be actually something that encourages more women to enter the labor uh, market uh, um, if it persists over time, of, of course. Um, so this is for the international empirical evidence. 
What do we have in the MENA region? Uh, we don't have a lot of papers working on that, uh, or even touching, you know, they're just touching upon the topic uh, from different aspects, but not exactly working on this topic. So um, we have uh, this uh, uh, paper by uh, Abdul uh, Faraj, uh, uh, he's working uh, in Jordan, and he just like mentions the increased violence against uh, women in, in Jordan, so it's not really related to our topic, but it shows that there is no more uh, women empowerment uh, due to COVID, basically. And um, we also have Elaz Zawitan and also actually uh, Dr. Vladimir is also has worked on this uh, paper as well. So you, in this paper, they show the share of jobs that can be performed remotely is low in, is low in sectors that employ women. So uh, basically, the the hypothesis I just told you about that women can work remotely um, is not an option for ma wa many women uh, in the MENA region because they work in sectors that um, doesn't allow for that. They cannot just take their laptops and work at home. Um, and then also there is this very recent paper. Uh, this is this one paper that really works on the same uh, question, uh, our uh, same research question, and it looks at. Uh, 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 like the how uh, the women uh, increased their household chores in uh, in during the pandemic due to the school closures, um, and um, their uh, their final um, like conclusion was that women with children were not more likely to exit work during the pandemic or during school closure. Um, so this is for the the MENA region uh, in uh, uh, literature. Now um, we uh, want to explore, like as I said, our research questions, and we do that through uh, a data set that has been released by the ERF. Um, it's the COVID-19 MENA Monitor Household Survey. Um, it's a phone survey that was collected over five waves, um, starting from October 2020, so uh, like seven months after the start of, uh, of COVID. Uh, we have an unbalanced panel of uh, almost 6,000 women surveyed at least once between five waves uh, in four countries, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, and Jordan. And um, the point here is that, um, like for Egypt and Jordan, and Jordan, we only have like two waves, and for Morocco and Tunisia, we have four waves. So we were not able to have uh, for all the countries, all the data. Um, and also, like um, data availability really uh, de like depends on which variable we're looking at. So, for example, for uh, variables on the e e evaluation of women in activity, we have almost 14,000 observations. Uh, when it comes to uh, variables ref reflecting losses in labor market outcomes, we have almost 2,000 observations only. Um, and the, uh, as I said, like the the w the they started collecting data in October 2020, or they have like uh, the data collected already by October 2020. Um, so for that, this means that we don't have information about um, COVID before, uh, sorry, about the labor market outcomes before the pandemic. Uh, and so actually this um, data was collected through retro retrospective questions. So they asked them, what did you use to work uh, in February 2020, and so on. Um, we have uh, a battery of, uh, uh, of labor market outcomes. Um, we have uh, the, like the normal definition of being unemployed, uh, remaining out of the, uh, being out of the labor force. Uh, we have also some variables on uh, being temporarily laid off, uh, permanently, permanently laid off, uh, the reduction in the number of hours, the a pay cut, a wage delay and the not a net monthly wage. So um, in most of the specification, we have all of these variables uh, just as uh, dummy variables uh, for the three first columns. And of course, for the net monthly wage, we have only, uh, we have a continuous variable. Um, uh, so now it comes to the, uh, we come to the, our empirical strategy. Um, so we have the, our outcome variables that I just mentioned, and then we have also um, uh, our independent variable here, having the, like, the number of children uh, for a woman um, living in in like region um, J at time T. 
And um, we have also uh, this, uh, like the beta 2, which is like the COVID regime effect, so it reflects the school closure. Um, and uh, and the, the beta, we have our outcome of interest, which is the school closure, uh, the interaction with the, the, chi the number of children. So, yes, sure. Uh, so um, it shows basically uh, whether women um, so what is the impact of, of uh, school closure on women with children? Uh, and uh, we have also like a bunch of um, uh, 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 controlled variables like education level, potential work experience, and so on. Um, so for school closure, we have, we, we retrieved the data from the um, uh, Oxford COVID-19 government response tracker. Um, I'm just going you know, to move from the slide, but it's just the, this is the 30, uh, uh, the 30, the, like the, we had take the average of uh, 30 days um, for each point. Uh, for the preliminary results we have, um, so uh, we didn't get like very, significant results in most of our uh, of our uh, uh, regressions uh, what we had is for our variable uh, like a um, uh, coefficient of interest the number of children times the school closure index we had um, this significant result that says that um, uh, women with children in the time of school closure were more likely to be unemployed than women without children in that same time, in that same period. And uh, they were also less likely to, to be out of the labor force. Um, and um, this is actually might reflect that um, it seems that women with children in the time of COVID were trying to penetrate again to the labor market or something like that. Um, and so this might reflect that uh, there was this need for women to go in the labor market uh, because of like uh, the husband uh, having uh, uh, trouble with uh, providing to the whole family. Um, and so, so this um, reflects again on the literature that we have been talking about on the hypothesis of needs. So women enter the labor market because of, of the needs. Um, so because also like if you notice here, it's, um, it's the, exactly the opposite sign. Women with children, the, 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 long, the bigger the number of children, they're more likely to be, um, oh sorry, they're la less likely to be unemployed and more likely to be out of the labor force. So they're more likely to, to be discouraged workers. Um, um, and uh, our results also we tried this with the, so we also have the whether the women um, uh, had to be suspended had to be terminated we didn't find any significant results for that we only found some significant results for uh, losing more than 25 percent uh, of the hours worked and you can see that women also with children uh, during the, the like the tight times of the pandemic uh, they uh, were less likely to lose uh, those two, uh, hours. And uh, this might also again reflect that they were more keen to keep on working and to, to keep on um, um, just not losing uh, hours, like working even more. Um, and again, might reflect something related to needs. However, our results are not robust throughout different specifications. Uh, we tried the multinomial logic uh, um, for like those different um, Variables. We have also tried alternative spe specification. So we have added the, the number of uh, children under their six. So we have this separated those um, groups. So the ch children under their six and children in school. And as you can see, that you know, there is no significant results for most of our um, uh, of you know, the most important uh, outcome variables that we uh, are looking at. Um, Okay, I'm done. Uh, so just uh, to conclude, uh, it seems that the pandemic might ha have highlighted that uh, some women in the Middle East may still be considered as secondary uh, income earners, that's uh, the normal, and that the household economic needs may be an important uh, explanatory factor for them to determine uh, entering the, uh, the labor market again, so their labor market participation. 
um, we found that the from the demand side, uh, women were not penalized. Like uh, we, if we go back to the to the grass, uh, to the sorry, the tables, you can see that women were not penalized for um, for having children from the uh, side of the uh, employer and. Again, finally, like our results are just not robust. So we may say that uh, that uh, our results, uh, like we we didn't find a lot of change happening from the pre-COVID situation. Okay, so that's it. Thank you. Okay.